The battle for the very heart of creation in the DC universe is taking place. Justice on one side, doom on the other. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Justice League issue number 33 and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we once again check on in with Hawk Woman and Martian Manhunter's son from that alternate universe. They're using their telepathic powers right now to try and psychically reach out to any part of John Jones that still might exist somewhere inside Apex Lex's body. And you know what? It just hits me right now. They're really gonna have to figure out what to do with this kid when everything is said and done. Here's hoping World Forger can forge him up a new world lest someone is gonna have to adopt this kid. And speaking of World Forger, and I absolutely was, he and and his brothers, the Monitor and Anti-Monitor, are finally ready to take the fight directly to their evil mother Perpetua and save the multiverse. Apart, they are all incredibly powerful, but together they are able to wield the very same powers of creation that their mother used to shape the multiverse as they know it. Of course, they can't wield it on their own, however, for that they have Starman who is able to use his piece of the totality to basically make the powers of creation dance. Then you got Hawkwoman herself and her special wings, who, as we discover this issue are actually empowered with the same energies that the raptor used to lock Perpetua away in the source wall all those millennia ago, means that together the heroes hope that they can recreate the situation that locked Perpetua away. Granted, this time Lex Luthor is there throwing all sorts of wrenches into things. Which means even when the three cosmic triplets do the Dragon Ball Z fusion dance and take up the new form of the Ultra Monitor, it still might not actually be enough to defeat Perpetua. Now elsewhere in time and space, the newly returned Aquaman is telling the Justice Society that if they can reach Atlantis in time, they might be able to turn the tide of battle, nautical pun not intended. You see, because this is World War II, the conch, an item of incredible power, and one of the items that Lex Luthor was so after is still in Atlantis, and if the heroes can grab it now, it could very well make all the difference in the world. This is actually a really great scene for several reasons. They shine the light on Aquaman again and really hit home how important his return is and everything he's been up to in his own book. It's a nice use of continuity that we don't get as much in DC anymore. Why, even Jon Stewart and Alan Scott get a nice little one-off together, wondering, will the darkest night ever end? We're in World War II now. In the future, we have the Doom Justice War. What's even the point? Will anything ever get better, or is the whole concept of brightest days and darkest nights existing in the hearts of every man, woman, and child on Earth? Now, we know for certain poor Kendra Saunders is going through her own darkest night right now as she does battle with Apex Lex. Lex goads Hawkwoman by talking about Martian Manhunter's last minutes, and it's heavily implied that before John was absorbed, he was actually thinking of Hawkwoman. Aww. Kendra sadly lets her rage get the best of her and ends up popping her wing powers way too early in the fight before she was supposed to, allowing the bad guys to regroup in advance. It's kind of like when you use your one super move in a video game before you're supposed to and you know how boned you are afterwards. This failure also ends up setting off a very unfortunate domino effect all throughout the timeline. As the Trinity and their Legion friends discover that they still might not have what it takes to bring down the giant-sized Brainiac 1 million. And while the other heroes may have been able to make it to Atlantis safely, they are still not too fond of air breathers, have no idea who Arthur is, and take them hostage. That's all pretty damn bad, but believe it or not, it actually gets much worse. The Legion of Doom has trapped them there and they haven't come alone. They brought a chained Poseidon with them too. And I mean really, I can think of few bigger dick power moves than showing up to Atlantis with their patron saint and god already beaten up. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just a morale killer right there. So yeah, for those playing along at home, everything is doomed, everyone is positively screwed, and there's no way that they can get out of this. Well, not unless they can get some more heroes on their side, and Kamandi, who managed to sneak away from the battle in the future, is willing to do just that. Where is he going for help? Well, beyond, of course, the Justice League Beyond. And so that was Justice League issue number 33, everybody, and just when I think this book can't get any bigger, it gets a lot bigger. We've got multiple timelines, multiple versions of the Justice League, a ton of villains, a ton of cosmic entities all fighting over the very forces of creation. And this issue even has some fun reintroducing Vandal Savage in an interesting way, him representing a kind of true neutral morality in the ongoing battle between Justice and Doom. Snyder continues to wring a lot of really good, really fun material out of all the different members of the Justice Society interacting with their future counterparts. I hope these characters can stick around in some form or another. 
I would definitely want to read about them. Overall, I would give this one another 8 out of 10. It continues to be one of the most consistently enjoyable DC books on the shelf right now. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel. And if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.